Well, that means you got it. If you ask, you believe, you receive, you execute. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Would you turn to John chapter 10, please? The Gospel of John chapter 10. Glory, glory, glory. John 10 and verse 7. Let's speak it because what you sow is what you reap. What you speak is what you eat. Amen? What you eat is what you what? Become. Amen. And Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. So if you're truly a sheep, you won't follow Amen. the wrong thing. Amen. Because there's a place where you are in God's presence. And in that presence, there's a sense that you know, and there's a voice that you know. And you won't follow anything else. Doesn't mean you won't be tempted, but you won't follow it. Because the word follow means to believe, and believe means to follow. So if you're truly a believer, you're going to follow him, right? You're not going to say you're a believer and still touch darkness. Amen? Okay, let's go a little further. In verse 9, he said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to what? Steal. Now, the first thing, the one of the things that the thief loves to steal is your identity. If you don't have one in Christ, then he doesn't need to steal it. Amen. This is not some kind of an imaginary or I want to say intangible walk with God. It is tangible. It is real. Amen. And in this, where Christ is, we walk with him. So in this, we know, not only know his presence, but we know his what? His voice. And sometimes his voice is his presence. Does everybody with me? I mean, sometimes it's not just a spoken thing. What's it say? The thief does what? Does not come to what? Except to what? Steal. What's the first thing he wants to do? Steal what? Your identity. Amen? Your what? Your identity. And, and it also says to what? Destroy. What does he want to destroy? You. Amen? He wants to what? I mean, he wants to kill you. Does everybody got that? So he comes to steal your identity. He wants to kill you. Why? So he can destroy your mission. Is everybody with me? Come on, let's do this again. Verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Say it again. To what? Steal, to kill, and to what? Destroy. Now he comes to steal your what? Identity. Comes to steal your, or kill your what? You. So he can what? Destroy your mission. Has everybody got this? Why? You were sent by God to fulfill a mission. Amen? Everybody say, I was sent by God to fulfill a mission. Now, you got to understand, the enemy wants to kill you before you do. But the first thing he can do, look at, the only way he can really get to you is to first steal your identity. But if you don't have an identity, he already has you. Amen? And he, what he does is he keeps people in captivity of deception. He keeps them encaged, imprisoned in deception. By keeping them in deception, they can't see beyond. It's like being in walls where you can't see out of. The only thing you can see is only you. It's all about you. So what he's trying to do is prevent you from being about kingdom business. Has everybody got that? Okay. All right, let's go a little further. Uh, verse 10 again. The thief does not come to accept his what? 
Steal? What's he going to steal? Your identity. He's trying to kill you, and he's trying to destroy your mission. Amen. What did God say? I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it what? More abundantly. Everyone say more. more. Abundantly. abundantly. I want to call this the more project. This is what God was doing. He was on the more project. For who? You. For me. He came to bring more. It was a more project. There was everything involved in it, but the whole thing was, was about bringing what? More. More. I've come to bring life abundantly. He was on a project called more. That was his mission, to bring more, to rescue, to destroy the works of the enemy. Why? So you could fulfill the mission. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter five and verse sixteen. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. There from from now on we regard no one according to the flesh. No one according to the flesh. No one according to the flesh. Amen. In other words, individuals. Or things in the arena that are associated with the flesh. In other words, we don't want, we don't look at the things that are seen. We make the things that are unseen to become seen. So we're looking through the natural into the spirit. Has everybody got it? He says this, watch this. Are you ready? Even though we have known Christ according to the natural or the physical, we now know him thus what? No longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the word Christ means the anointing. Christ is the eternal presence and power of God Almighty. That's why Jesus came. He was, in, he was in the body. The body was prepared for him. God's presence, God's truth, and God's power was put into a body and sent to the earth. Has everybody got that? Amen. And then what he did is he paid the price for me and you so that everyone can receive it. So everyone could be empowered. So everyone could know truth. Amen. Amen. So that now we can become the temple of God and the carriers of the anointing. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why we're no weapon formed against us can prosper. Amen. And every tongue that rises up against us will be condemned. Amen. But you got to be in position to be backed by heaven. I, I used to be backed by hell. Amen. When I was out there doing the things I shouldn't have. But now I'm backed by heaven. Amen. And so are you if you're in Christ. Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, in the anointing, in his eternal presence, power, and truth, that's how you're in Christ. He is a what? New creation. Why? Because that presence creates new. It's a creative presence. It's creative power. It's creative truth. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? new now all things are of god who has what reconciled us to himself through jesus christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation so y'all are y'all have a ministry called reconciliation you don't have to stand behind a pulpit or be on a street corner hello you can be anywhere you have a ministry of reconciliation that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are what? Everyone say, I'm an ambassador of the kingdom of God. For Christ, as though God were pleading through who? Through us. He's pleading through us, but you and I got to get out of his way. He's pleading through us. God is pleading. That's amazing. He's pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled. For he made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might. That word might means there's a price that must be paid. And that price is called cooperation. Amen. Everywhere you see might, if, and therefore is always associated with cooperation. That we might become the what? Righteousness of God in him. Everyone say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's 
So everybody get this. So you are God's righteousness. So when you're walking in Christ, people are looking at you as long as you're not out there sinning and doing all kinds of goofy stuff. Because that's just not express, expressing God's righteousness, is it? So that when we're in, in, in right standing with God, we're walking in the Christ-like character. We are expressing Christ. We are expressing, in fact, by expressing Christ, the fruit of expressing Christ is righteousness. So people are, you're carrying the righteousness of God in everywhere you go. Everywhere. Unless you're not walking according to his will. Unless you don't have relationship with him. Remember, that's the difference. Why? Because to produce righteousness, you must eat of the tree of life. Where the other tree just produces good and evil. I'm a good person. I don't know Christ. How many people are going to hell who quit? They, they, they stop drinking, smoking, and all the other things thinking that they're good now. So they stop drugging. But they don't know Christ. So it, it does no good, does it? Amen. Is everybody okay? Amen. All right, let's go a little further. I guess we don't have to. Praise God. <laughs> so many say, I know who I am in Christ. Remember we talked about stealing identity. Then the Lord, well, the Lord says, if you know me, then show me. Does everybody again? Express me. If you know me, you express me. See, when you really know him, you express him. If you don't know him, you don't express him. Then you have a mind relationship instead of a spirit relationship where there is conviction, counsel, correction, direction. If you really know him, it's not out of the mind. It's out of the spirit. That's what they call the heart because your heart is the character of your spirit. Amen? And so we act like him. We have a conduct, a character. There's an integrity that we carry. We're willing to lay down our life for his cause, not for our own. Amen? It's about expressing, expanding his kingdom. Again, we are, if we're ambassadors of Christ, ambassadors, Christ number one, is we represent the kingdom. We're an ambassador. We carry the righteousness of God Almighty. It's our responsibility to be blameless and spotless from the world because it contaminates us. And if we get con contaminated, you can't express Christ, can you? Amen? Go to Matthew 13. So we're to walk in him. Amen? Amen. In him. And as we walk in him, he expresses him. In Matthew 13. More project. More of him, less of us. Didn't John the Baptist say that? I must decrease that he could what? Increase. That's so powerful and so profound. That means we got to constantly take off the old and put on the new. I must decrease. That means the old man. I must become humble. I must maintain a pure heart and clean hands. I must decrease that he can what? Increase. That's the more project. Matthew 13, verse 10. And the disciples came and said to Jesus, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you, everyone say, it's been given to me, given to, me. to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. What an honor. What an honor. You and I know the mysteries of the kingdom. It has been given to us, but to them, he says, it hasn't been given yet. For whoever has to him what? More. Come on, read it with me. Whoever has to him what? More. more. Everyone say more. Because that's the more project. More will be what? Given. given. And he will have abundance, but whoever does not have, even what he has will be what? Taken away. Taken away from him. Therefore, I speak to them in parables, which are actually parallels between the spirit realm and the physical realm. Because seeing they do not see, and hearing they don't hear nor do they understand. And in them, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says what? <coughs> Hearing you will hear and shall not understand. And seeing you will see and not perceive. For the ears, the hearts of these people have gone what? Dull, hard-hearted. 
In other words, listen, there's a place where you and I should never come short of staying hungry. We should always be hungry. The words of the word say, those who hunger and thirst for his righteousness shall be filled. Look at none of us has made it. I love to learn more. There should always be a hunger to learn more. If there's not a hunger to learn more, there's something wrong with you. Amen. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. That's what happens when you don't want to learn more. The ears are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn so that I should what? Heal them. Heal them. That I should what? Heal them. Heal. Bully, but, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. hear. That's so powerful. We are blessed by what? Just seeing and hearing. We are blessed. We're blessed. Everyone say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. In this, what is he saying? Look at more will be given. More, again, God's on the more project. He's always been on the more project. Now, that means that there's something that you and I must be responsible. He will not give something to someone that's not responsible. The, and, and responsibility, there's a responsibility. So there's more responsibility, isn't there? And this responsibility, responsibility is the ability to respond according to Christ-like integrity. You're responding to Christ-like integrity. Amen? We are, we are givers. We, we don't look at, you know, look at the world right now as a taker. There, there's so much entitlement. Everything owes. You and I, he's paid the price. That's a part of benefits with him. Amen? In fact, the benefits says he blessed the Lord all my soul and forget not his benefits. And what does he do? He forgives us for our dumbness. Amen? Amen? He forgives us when we make mistakes. It says he heals our diseases. What a benefit. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. He rescues us from a life of destruction. Why? So we can fulfill the mission. He renews our youth like the eagle. Woohoo! <laughs> and he puts good things in our mouth. So I want you to understand it. It starts off with, bless the Lord, all my soul. How are you going to bless him? Comes out of your mouth. And it ends with, he puts good things in your mouth. Do you see that? That's how benefits are manifested. Then you have a lifetime warranty. Amen? So there's an area where we are, more comes with more responsibility. We are not takers like entitlements. We are givers. We become more responsible when, when we become more responsible because God tests us in responsibilities, then he releases more to you. He always does. In other words, what is forced will not last. What is what? Forced will not last. A lot of people force God to do things. You mean you can force God to do something? Oh, yeah, you can ask him till you drive him crazy. Of course, he doesn't get crazy. He just says, all right, I'm going to give it to you. I've been trying to tell you this ain't for you, and it's not God's time, but I'm going to give it to you anyways. <laughs> He says, I'm going to give this to you, but I'm going to tell you, it won't last. You come crying back to me again. Amen. You know, why, why take good when you can wait for best? Amen. You know? <laughs> Luke 8. Luke chapter 8. In the more project, before more can be released, there must be responsibility tested. Amen? So many times we go, man, I just don't get it. Why hasn't God done this yet? Because you haven't passed the test to receive it yet. Amen. You're still playing games. One foot in the world, one foot in the kingdom. Not willing to learn. Amen? I mean, listen, what does the word say? It says, Seek me with all of your heart, all of your strength, all of your might, all of your, seek me. 
seek me. People want everything from God, but they don't even seek him. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and it shall be added. It says his righteousness. And then things get released. See, when you do what he asks you to do, then he releases more. Amen? In Luke 8, verse 11, is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked by what? With the cares and the riches and the pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. In other words, it grows but gets destroyed. It grows and gets destroyed because they're still caught up. Why? Because the world is unclean. So it, it, if you're trying to grow something, you make sure that soil is not contaminated. It doesn't have bugs in it, right? So that that fruit or whatever you're growing can grow and bear fruit. But if it's contaminated in any way whatsoever, it will wither and die. It will only grow. There, see, the enemy loves to set limits on us. Verse 15. See, that's when people's heroes are of the world. Oh, I want to be just like your desire should be just like Jesus. Amen. He should be your hero. Verse 15. But the ones that fell on good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with what? Patience or endurance. In other words, this is more, isn't it? No one, when he has lit a lamp, covers it with a vessel or puts it under a bed, but sets it on a lampstand that those who enter may what? See the light. Again, this is so powerful. The cares of the world and the pleasures of life choke it. That means that they, don't, they haven't made, come to that place where they have a mindset, a kingdom mindset. You and I must have a kingdom mindset. In other words, it's not about us. It's about him. Remember, the ruler of this world is who? Satan. He comes to steal your identity, to kill you, and destroy your mission. That's his purpose. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Second Corinthians chapter 9. <clears throat> the Moore Project. I must decrease that he can increase. <laughs> so to get more, you got to die more. <laughs> Verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also what? Reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will reap bountifully. So le let each one of one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a what? Cheerful giver, a cheerful laborer. See, giving is not just finances. It's giving of time. It's giving of, that's labor, it's works. It's giving, look at, the more you worship God, the more you change. The more you speak God's word, the more you change. Why? Because you're getting more. But if you're one that doesn't go after God with all of your heart, you don't get more. If you're still being fulfilled by the world's pleasures, you can't get more. Just stay stagnant. You'll stay out of the limitation. Oh, but I go to church. It's not about coming to church. There's a lot of people that come to church and still don't change. You know, it's like, what do they say? You can bring a horse to the well, but he doesn't have to drink. Amen. Amen. So when we come to church, we come to celebrate. <laughs> yes. Celebrate. Amen. We're celebrating his victory. 
and we're dancing in the spirit. We're, we're celebrating. We're drinking. We're, 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 drinks are on the house. Amen. We're getting filled with the God's presence. We're going after him. We're grabbing hold. You want, look at the woman with the issue of blood. What did she do? She crawled on her hands and knees to go touch. We got to do whatever we can to go touch him. Because when you touch him, you get touched. Oh, yes. Lovely. <laughs> I mean, lovely. Did everybody go? All right. And verse, um, verse 8. And God is able to what? Make. Make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have a what? An abundance for every what? Good work. Let me tell you, you come to a Friday night service, it's work. Amen. <laughs> it's work, man. You got to die. But I'm telling you, there's a great reward. Oh, snap it. Verse 9. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may who, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. While you are enriched in everything for all liberty, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Wow. That is so powerful. Does everybody see this? Let's go a little further. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also to abounding through many thanksgiving to God, while through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God for the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ and for your liberal sharing with them and all men. And by their prayer for you, who long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable. You can't describe it, man. It's tough. His goodness. Does everybody understand? I mean, it's hard to, you have to experience it. You experience God's goodness. And when you experience God's goodness, there is a change. But there's a price. Amen? There's a prize. You got to fight to get to him. There's a fight. Acts chapter 9. So what we do, Jesus came to give, right? Jesus is a giver. So we labor unto the Lord in everything we do. Acts chapter 9, and verse 19. Nine nineteen. Um, yeah, that's nine nineteen. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? So your worship is not in uh, you know in vain. Then something's always happening. How about you know prayer? Praying. You know how many believers don't even pray? They get up, thank God ask them for help, and they leave. They don't even spend 15 minutes or 20 minutes with him. They don't intercede. They don't strike first. They don't get dressed with the full armor of God. See, the Lord says, acknowledge me in all of your ways. Amen? Acknowledge me. Call upon me. Why? So we want him to establish our steps and our thoughts, don't we? Acts 9, 19, is everybody there? Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. It says here, now, um, Ananias came in and laid hands on Saul, who was persecuting the Christians. And, and it says, so when he had received food, he was what? Strengthened, Saul who became Paul. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus, so he fellowshiped. He was learning with them. He probably had a lot of questions. It says, immediately he preached, a, preached the Christ. Why? Because when Ananias had laid hands on him, he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. He began to speak in tongues. The scales came off of his eyes, and he realized 
that he was the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He realized it was no longer him. It says, immediately he preached the Christ, the anointing, in the synagogues that he is the son of God. Then all who heard were amazed and said, is this not he who destroyed? He destroyed. He was used as a destroyer, wasn't he? He was destroying many, many individuals' missions because he killed them. Destroyed those who called on this name in Jerusalem has come here for the, that purpose so that he might bring them bound to chief priests. But Saul did what? He increased all the what? The more. He increased the what? More, because Jesus was on a more project. But Saul increased in all the more in what? Strength. In other words, in health. How many of all God wants you to be healthy? He increased all the more in the strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that Jesus is the Christ. Now look at this here. Now after many days were passed, the Jews plotted to what? Kill him. You don't think the devil's got a plan to kill you? Yeah, he does. He's trying to steal your identity. He's trying to steal your identity and kill you. See, if you give up your identity, remember Esau gave up his birthright, didn't he? He gave up his identity. And look at the outcome where that was. Disastrous. But their plot became known to Saul. And they watched the gates day and night to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night and led him down through the wall in a large basket. And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was the dis a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the disciples, and he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly, boldly, everyone say boldly, at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So he was with them at Jerusalem coming in and going out. And he spoke what? Boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the healingness, but they attempted to what? kill him. Listen, it ain't over until it's over. Has everybody got it? The enemy is setting traps for you every single day. He's trying to bring discouragement, trying to bring sickness, disease. He's trying to bring poverty. He's trying to steal your identity. He's trying to kill you, and destroy you. He'll do everything he can to prevent you from fulfilling your mission. He'll try and send things across your path that are, seem wonderful according to the world's standards. See, he knows. Uh, let me share this with you. The enemy knows your inner, carnal, fleshly desire. He knows what it is. He knows. And he tries to get it activated. He tries to entice you, to draw you. He knows. See, most people don't know that demons can read your thoughts. They know what you think. No, they don't. Oh, really? Who have you been arguing with in your mind lately? Amen. Hallelujah. Because that's all that religious garbage that they preach. This isn't about religion. This is about kingdom business. Amen. Amen? Believe me, when that angel stood in front of me, he knew every one of my thoughts. I couldn't even, even when, I was, when the Lord was in front of me. But when the angel of the Lord was in front of me one day, man, he knew everything. Everything. And the Lord, when he was in front of me, I couldn't even, before I could even ask a question, he answered it. I would just think of the question before, before it was fully manifested. Okay, I'm going to ask. Boom, there it is. He answered it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Saul, who became Paul, after denying himself, laying his life down for Christ, purposed in his heart that he was done. I'm done with worldly living. I'm done persecuting the Christians, the Jews. Amen? I'm done. I'm done. 
See, so many times people have not come to the end of themselves yet. Or they haven't come to the final decision. Amen. I'm done. You know, we minister in a jail many times, and one of the things we share, have you come to your final decision? And are you, can you self-examine and see if you are fulfilling that final decision? Because if you're not fulfilling that final decision, then there's open doors. Amen. Are you done? Are you truly a new creation in Christ? Are you done with the old life? Have you come to your final decision so that Christ can have his way? Well, then what happens is then you become more responsible and God begins to increase, doesn't he? Amen? One of the things we want more of his presence. We want more of him. We want to know him more. One of the things he does is he, he increases his presence. He increases his revelations to you. He increases as you become more responsible. Matthew 25. And if he did it to Saul, can he do it to anyone else? Amen. Hey, man, come on. The guy was out killing believers. Matthew 25 and verse 20. The more project. Again, I really believe that we are entering a time of plenty. You'll probably hear me say this more. But there's a price to receive more. Amen. It's called cooperation. God is doing a tremendous testing on his people. Matthew 25, verse 20. Let's speak it. So he who had received what? Five talents, came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and what? Faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Is that increase? Is that more? Amen. Amen. Enter the joy of the Lord. He, he who also had two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. And the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Are we called servants? Amen. 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 So what God has given me and you, we're to be responsible to accountable to verse 24 then he who received the one talent came and said lord i knew that you were a hard man he was making excuses justification reason which reasoning is a guillotine of faith lord i knew you'd be a hard man reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered and i was a what Fear. Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. I was afraid and I went and hid your talents in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. No increase. Why? Why did he not increase? Because what? Fear. Fear. So look at. He had an opportunity to sow more, didn't he? He had, look at, again, so, sowing is laboring. It's work, isn't it? Whether you're, you're giving of your time, amen, you're, you're giving of your finances, you, you're, you're giving, whatever it may be, you're giving. That's called sowing. This man refused to even do that. Watch, because watch what he calls him a, a, after all of this, amen. I mean, this is so wild because in reality, there are many individuals that are just... They just read their Bibles and don't do nothing. Thank God they at least read their Bibles. But there are those who don't even read their Bibles. Amen? There are those who don't sow. There are those who don't go out. They don't labor. They don't commit. They don't participate. Does everybody got this? God is trying to bring increase. He's trying to bring more. But unless we sow more, we don't get more. And again, then what's he testing us? He's testing our 
responsibilities. He tests our integrity in Christ. He wants to see more of him than he releases more. The more he increases in your life, the more he releases because he knows you're about God's business, kingdom business, and not your own business. Amen? All right, are you ready? Uh, and verse 25 again, and I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground and looked there, you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you what? Wicked, Wicked and what? Lazy. Lazy. Why? Because he wasn't willing to participate, wasn't willing to sow. You lazy servant, you know that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. He didn't even do that. He just held on to it. Too lazy, he didn't go to the bank. And at my coming, I would receive back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has what? Ten. Oh, did you notice that the person that was doing the right thing didn't even have to labor for that? Oh, it just increased. God loves it. I'm telling you, he's on a more project. See, when you're doing the right thing with what he's given you, and it increases, he adds to it. He always adds to it. Why? Because he can see that you're responsible. Why can you be responsible? Because he sees more of his integrity in you, which is his character. You're not easily moved. You're not one who makes emotional decisions. Has everybody got it? And you're submissive. You're humble. God rejects the proud but gives grace to the what? Humble. That means more. More. Is everybody okay? Amen. You got that. So we sow in labor. We work unto the Lord. And more flows. Integrity. How, you know, we need more health, don't we? Amen. He gives us not only more health, more wisdom, more understanding, Look at, there's something else he does. He opens more opportunities. Amen. He opens more opportunities. <sighs> and then he opens opportunities for more souls. So more is always, so there's always an increase in your life. Always increasing. Never decreasing. Always increasing. Why? Because you're giving. You're always giving. You're giving of your time. You're giving of your praise. You're giving of your prayer. You're giving of your worship. You're laboring unto the Lord. You're doing intercession. Does everybody got this? See, everything is associated with connecting with the Spirit. And the more you, what's it say? He who sows to the Spirit reaps life. Hello. Health. All kinds of things. Go to Colossians 2. Colossians chapter 2. In verse 16, please. says, so let no one judge you in food or drink or regarding festival or new moon or Sabbath, which are the shadow of things to come, but the substance is of what? Christ. Christ. Mm. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility. Oh, there's a lot of that going on. And worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen and vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And not holding fast to the what? Amen. The head. Listen, I've seen many places where Jesus is the center, not the head. Amen. Amen. So they dance around him and not for him. Amen. And not holding fast to the head from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments does what? Grows, Grows with the increase that is from who? God. See, God will bring the increase. You don't have to. He brings it. 
You know, many people are waiting for a raise at their job. God will turn the heart eventually. Maybe he's just checking you out. Man, I need a raise. No, you need to die. But you don't know how hard I labored. <laughs> yeah, you're laboring on for the money. Are you laboring on to the king? Woo. <laughs> Glory. So don't let anyone cheat you, amen? Now, are you ready for this? Verse 20. Therefore what? If you what? If you what? Oh, snap it. If you died with Christ from the what? Basic principles of the world. What's the basic principles? Me, me, and me. It's all about me. That's the basic principles of the world, me. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to what? Regulations. Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which are all, all concerned things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom, self-imposed religion, false humility and neglect of the body, but are no value against the indulgence of the flesh. Oh, there's that form of religion. Religion. Matthew 6. Everyone say, I'm not religious. I am the righteousness of Christ. I am free by this presence and the spirit, the anointing of the living Christ. I am new. Matthew 6. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 19 for a minute. Do not lay up for yourselves what? Treasures. Treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where th uh, thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures where? In heaven. Well, how are you going to lay up treasures in heaven? Buy them? You sow. You can't go to the store and buy a treasure for heaven. None of those little demon statues, you know, help you. A little cupid, little, and there's, there's no female angels with wings. And <laughs> but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So if you're one who really wants to labor unto the Lord, you will sow into the kingdom. You will sow time. You will sow prayer. You will sow worship. You will sow seed. Your soul finances your soul. You sow. You're a sower. You're a giver. Amen. Amen. Why? Because when you sow, you receive, then you're able to receive to help someone. Because you can't give what you don't have. Amen. Amen. Labor unto the Lord, treasures are in heaven. Proverbs 10. It's the more project. How many of y'all want to join the more project? Amen. Praise God. Proverbs 10, verse 11. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it together, please. The mouth of the righteous is a well of life, but violence covers the mouth of the what? The wicked. Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. Wisdom is found on the lips of him who has understanding. But a rod is for the back of him who is devout of understanding. Wise people store up knowledge. But the mouth of a foolish is near destruction. The rich man's wealth is in his store strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous leads to 
life. Say it again. The labor of the righteous leads to life. The wages of the wicked to what? Sin. He who keeps instruction is in the way of life, but he who refuses correction goes where? Goes where? Astray. Everyone say correction brings me direction. Mm. The labor of righteousness leads to life. Proverbs 14. It's good to hear pages turning on a Sunday morning. You know, many people are waiting on God. Well, if you understand what waiting is, it means like waiter or waitress. While you're waiting on God, you're serving. Does everybody get it? Amen. So while you're waiting, you're serving. And you're waiting for the next thing to come. And then when that comes, you're still waiting. Why? Because you're still serving. Because you're still sowing, right? Proverbs 14, verse 20. Is everybody there? The poor man is hated even by his own neighbor. But the rich has many friends. He who despises his neighbor's sins, but he who has, has mercy on the poor, happy is he. Do they not go astray who deceive, devise evil? But mercy and truth belongs to those who devise good. In all labor there is profit. Hello? In all labor there is profit. Is this it okay to profit? Amen. God wants to bless your socks off. Or give you red sneakers, whatever it is. But you got to give them in the dance, don't you? In all labor there is profit, but idle chatter leads only to what? Poverty. Man, I remember being, man, when I was out there getting high and all this stuff, man, we had a great talk. Boy, we'd sit around and get high and get stupid and talk about all the great things we were going to do, and we didn't have two nickels to rub together. Oh, we had great plans. Man, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Yeah, give me more of that. Okay. We're going to do this. You're right. You couldn't even get up the next day. All nothing but lies and delusion. Amen. And that's what the enemy loves to do. That's that deception. People have great talk of what they want to do. Amen? We don't have to talk about what we want to do. We want God to give us what we're supposed to do. Amen? Well, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And God laughs. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. All right. Let's go a little further. Verse 24. The crown of the wise is their riches, but the foolishness of fools is a folly. A true witness delivers souls, but a deceitful witness speaks lies. In the fear of the Lord, there is a strong confidence, and his children will have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. To turn one away from the snares of death. The fear of the Lord is honor, respect, and reverence. Because if you don't have fear of the Lord, then you're not, you know. See, if that fear of God isn't there, it's a, not, not a terror. It's a loving fear. It's a reverence. It's an honor and respect. Then you connect with him all the time. You, you ask him first. He's involved in everything you do. Amen. Ephesians 2. He is the CEO of the Moore Project, you know. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1, please. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the what? Loss of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. 
But God, who is rich in his mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were idiots, dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show us the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved. That's God's plan. Amen. Through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of what? Works, Works lest anyone should boast. For we are his what? Workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works. That's called labor, that's sowing. Good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should what? Walk in them. Amen? So we're not laboring be to to. to to get home to heaven. You know, you got all these people knocking on your door because they're laboring. They think that they got to go out and labor to, to get into heaven. So their labor is replacing the relationship. Your relationship should promote good works in labor. Amen. Hello? Has everybody got that? I didn't get any. Yeah. Therefore, remember that you, want, you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcised by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We were created for good works. Amen. We were created for good works. The more project. Third John. Third, the third epistle of John. Why? To bring more. God wants me and you to profit. Amen? Amen. Third John. In verse 2, would you all speak this with me? Beloved, I what? Pray that you may prosper. Hello? That you may what? Prosper. Now, wait a minute. There's something you're going to have to do to prosper. Watch. In all things and be in what? Health, just as your, your soul prospers. That's your mind, your will, your emotions, and imagination. In other words, they're being converted. They're being changed into the image and likeness and integrity and character of Christ. Has everybody got it? The more it changes, the more you change, the more he can trust you, more responsibility. Amen? The more, why? Because then you're our sower. You're a giver. No matter what. You intercede. You're one that prays for people. You groan for other souls. You want to see everyone get saved. You don't spend your days about you. It's about him. Amen. Amen. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you what? Walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have borne witness of your love before the church, if you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well, because they went forth for his namesake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers for the truth. Powerful. And I'm going to close at 1 Peter chapter 2. So does God want you to prosper? Amen. Yeah. But you need to be connected by the Spirit of God to the CEO of the Moore Project. First Peter chapter two. <clears throat> and verse one. Therefore laying aside what? All malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. As newborn babes, desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow. That you may what? Grow. Thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, 
coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. In other words, your spiritual sacrifices is called praise. So the more you praise, the more you sow. Oh, glory. The more you dance, the stronger you get. Hallelujah. You may be sore tomorrow, but the day after you'll be stronger. <laughs> Verse 6. Therefore, it is also contained in Scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious. And he who believes on him will by no means put to death. That word believe means to what? Follow. He who follows him will by no means be put to shame. Shame. That means you're not going to do something that's going to bring shame because you're following him. Therefore, uh-oh, therefore means, what does it mean? Anybody remember? Cooperation. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word, to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light, who once were not a people but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, are you ready for this? I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. And having what? Your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Good works. Good works. More responsibilities. More increase. Sow more. Reap more. Amen? Amen. Be connected to the CEO of the Moore Project. It's a good day to die. Amen. So that he can live. Amen. 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 So, Father, we thank you for your word. I apply the blood of Jesus on the seed that's been imparted, Lord. And I'm asking that you'll continue to quicken us. If you have to kick us in the butt, whatever you got to do, Lord. Cause us, Lord, to come out of laziness. Cause us to come out of selfishness. Cause us to come out of the entanglements and the principles of this world and grab understanding of kingdom business that we may be kingdom mindset soldiers of the most high God willing to do whatever it takes coming to the end of ourselves that more of you can take over. So Lord, we thank you, we honor you and we give you all the glory for your word that's been imparted in us today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.